right. Um, this is the small, rather small trailer that I not only, I, you know, I sleep in here, I cook in here, I have a little bit of a workshop set up in here, I do all my office stuff in here, shipping, everything is out of here, and uh, I would like to get out of here and turn this into just a workshop area, but uh, we'll see how that goes this winter. That's the goal though, get the hell out of here. Anyway, today we're gonna do something a little bit different, which is I'm just gonna kind of riff off of the idea of safety and um, related stuff. And I, this is spurred by the fact that I keep encouraging everyone to get an ax and go out and cut a bunch of firewood. Um, but it's extremely dangerous, you know, it just is. And, and what happens is in the beginning, you don't have, um, you don't know what can go wrong. It, let's let's put it that way. And if people aren't used, especially aren't used to using sharp tools, the amount of damage you can do with a very sharp knife or a very sharp axe or a dull knife or a dull axe, um, either way, is uh, just phenomenal. Uh, my friend David the Good from uh, survivalgardener.com, he also has a YouTube channel, which is David David the Good, uh, great guy. He recently cut his tendons in one of his fingers or two of his fingers, something like that, with a machete. He's used to using a machete. You know, he's been using one since he's a kid, but things happen, you know. Um, so there's lesson number one. Don't become complacent. You know, safety is an ongoing exercise. The point is that something unexpected happened to him that he was, wasn't was able to for, or didn't foresee. And the type of things I'm going to talk about today are the type of things that will would lead to you being able to predict these kind of things happening that you kind of don't expect or haven't experienced before. Let's let's say that. What happened to him is he was wearing a broad brimmed hat and his machete caught on the edge of his hat and deflected the force of the machete into his hand, which he was I think he was holding a coconut, you know. Which It, it wasn't like that. It wasn't like that. That wasn't the way. You know, which is just normal work. You know, you could say, well, he shouldn't have been holding that coconut. Well, what do you do? You know, I mean, and this is this is one of the things I'm going to talk about is people will give you these safety rules like don't ever hold the thing that you're cutting seriously. Like, how do you get anything done? I mean, you just have to sometimes. I, I'm just not a big fan of these like Boy Scout dummy rules because they just don't work in real life. Like you're gonna find yourself in situations where you're gonna break like every rule that anyone's ever told you uh, at some point, in some way, maybe in just a small way. Uh, the field is not, you know, a textbook. And this is where we need to start developing adaptive strategies that are intelligent and engage us. So the problem with a dummy rule is that it doesn't engage you. It just says it makes a cutoff point and then everything on this side is supposed to be safe and everything on that side is supposed to be unsafe. And that kind of black and white crap doesn't really work in real life. That's an important concept to me and I'm probably going to expand a lot of the things I'm going to talk about here into individual videos or talk about them again at least. The point of this is really to give you the parts that are adaptive, that, that it's like a philosophy of thinking on safety. Now I'm planning some videos for sure with probably knives and definitely with axes that are going to be specific. It's like we, we were made on a pattern, we're cutting the same type of things over and over and the same accidents are going to happen. So I'm going to do some videos on specifically on that you know, like letting you know what, what goes wrong and what happens to us when we have accidents, like say with an ax. To the best that I can do, I don't think I'm actually the best person to do that, but I think um, I'm gonna do it anyway. <laughs> so, uh, okay, so here we go. So where do we start? Okay, here's where we're gonna start. We're gonna start with the most basic safety rule, which is watch your follow through. Now, again, see, this isn't a specific thing, it's just 
a general philosophy and it's it's an approach to safety it's an approach to your work all the time when you're using a sharp tool what we want to do if we have a sharp tool is keep that tool from contacting us or someone else and causing damage to our bodies right i mean that's really what it's all about you need to be thinking ahead uh, a step <clears throat> or more so let's say that we're using a sharp tool and this could be sharper honestly we're using a sharp tool and we have a bunch of things at play okay we have our own coordination and motive force like we're adding energy to this this object the object itself let me grab a chunk of wood now this object has certain properties um, it has a certain hardness it has a certain cut ability it may if i take a shaving off this wood versus another wood one or the other may be more stringy and fibrous like i cut under and it's just going to peel up a long nice shaving where another wood might be so short that it's like chattering and just chipping off little bits i might be cutting across the end of the grain or i might be cutting along the grain so we're dealing with there's a trinity right there i guess um, i'm just i'm just pulling this out of my butt but there's kind of a trinity there so the tool has a certain like uh, range of possibility when when uh, when we apply ourselves to the tool and then we have certain abilities which we are you know maybe more or less aware of depending on what our skill level is and then the material has certain properties which are very important to how everything is going so that allows us to, to begin to start predicting what is going to happen when we take the tool apply our force to the to the object and then you know the object is going to respond in a certain way and maybe we don't know what that is yet but we need to test it right so as we start to work we become more familiar with the specific object we're working on all of that is unfamiliar territory to a novice what happens is over time we start to accumulate a database of knowledge and much of it is is really subconscious but it's there and we do this throughout our lives you know we learn these things throughout our lives in order to stay safe just um, in daily life because daily life is really not safe i mean there's all kinds of things that can go wrong some of them just hurt a little bit some of them are downright dangerous and so we have this process built into us i mean the process this everything i'm talking about is built in but we can also be more conscious of that and um, potentiate it more and also just add our our conscious understanding of things and some rules and stuff like that to make the whole thing work better okay so these are these are really important concepts Th these are the important things what i'm telling you are the important things more so than do and don't do this specific thing because we can learn those pretty fast but this stuff is the adaptive stuff this is the intelligent stuff and this is what it takes you need to be engaged in the process of, of cutting something with a sharp tool. So I like to say that everyone has like a little safety officer in their head. And often that safety officer is saying, hey, hey, wait, wait, right before an accident happens. I've had this happen to me so many times and it's a challenge to listen to that little safety officer. I think some people are much better at listening to it than others. And are we gonna listen or are we not? That is the product of basically mostly subconscious um, processes. So you can be working away thinking about something else and this little voice will come up, you know? So, so, so there's something going on inside of us that's watching out for our safety that's almost like perceived as a separate entity from our conscious thought that's what i'm saying so one of the main i think i already said this and got sidetracked but really kind of the main safety rule with using sharp tools is watch your follow through and i learned that term from morris kohansky who is uh wrote northern bushcraft which i think now is just under the title bushcraft yeah watch your follow through what does that mean so another term you could use and think of is edge awareness where is your edge at any time what direction is it headed in and what direction is it going to going to head in if okay so if could be a lot of different things but that's what i'm talking about with follow through so we have we adopt an awareness where i'm like if i'm working with this knife i'm pretty much constantly aware of where this sharp edge is well no matter what i'm doing like if i'm just sitting here talking 
like say I was talking to someone, or especially if there's people, other people in here milling around, like I'm, then I'm extra conscious, but I just know where this is all the time, hopefully. Hopefully, that's that's the ideal. So there's that, and then there's what if. What if I'm carving and I I make a misjudgment and I'm you know I'm pushing hard. How hard am I pushing? Am I pushing really hard? I'm pushing a little bit hard, and this slips and it comes out of the cut and goes forward. What's in the way? Is my leg in the way? Is someone else in the way? The specifics about what happened when you're say using a knife or even a specific knife or an axe over time build up and you start to understand what can happen. Like I still have things happen with when I'm using an ax that I'm like, oh, that can happen. You know, oh, here's one right here. So the other day I was, I was just kind of cut limbing a, a limb that was like this, right? So the, the things like at an angle and I, I was limbing this way, um, the wrong way down the tree, never, Never limb from the top to the butt. <laughs> I'm joking, can you tell? Um, usually it's not a good idea. And I'm standing on this side of the tree, right? And you know, and I was just like, you, you get, once you start to get good at something, you enter a cocky phase and you start getting so into the part of like using the tool and getting into a flow that you might start to forget where your body parts are. So I should have seen this coming, but I was just kind of clipping along at a pretty good rate and, and I was standing on this side and I, I hit a limb and it went through really easy because it was a small limb. And then the ax came this way across the log because the log is sloped, right? So the handle's only so long. So once it goes through, it continues this way instead of going down the side. And that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. You know, once that happens, then next time I'm gonna hopefully be a little more conscious and, and keep remembering that. Here's another thing that happened to me. So last year I was bucking and you know I got all the way through the cut on both sides and I was going to like sever the final cut on this this log right so you know I have a notch from one side a notch from one side and it's just held together by a few strands of wood so I stood to one side like you should and I was on you know my side of the log here I cut through this way and I, I you know, I swing pretty hard when I'm doing that because I want to make sure it goes through the first time. Like, I don't want to sit there and peck at it, right? I just want it to go through. So I smacked that sucker. It went through. Everything was beautiful. I was, everything was perfect. You know, I was out of the way. The ax swung to the side of me. And right on the other side of the log, there was a little tiny, um, you know, maybe like half inch or less, like three eighths of an inch stub that I left when I cut off a little sapling. And it, the axe hit that and glanced back in my direction. Um, it didn't hit me. It was, it wasn't even super close, but it just it, like I added that to my catalog, right? And I was like, oh, you know, that can happen. Like I need. It was just really hard to see this stub, so I never noticed it. And but if I'd really been looking, I would have noticed it. And I may not have moved it, but I would have done something different, like stand on the other side of the log or hit it more gently or move the log. There's any number of things I could have done. So that's what I'm talking about. But, but I could tell you that stuff all day long and it's not gonna, it's not gonna replace these things that I've, I was already telling you. You have the tool and it's, it has physical limitations. Like it can only do so many different things. Then you have the material. Like how is the material going to respond and how well can you predict that? And getting into how well you can predict that what the true capabilities of the tool are and what you're capable of are all the part that you have to learn okay so that's the that's the danger is that in the beginning you don't know any of that stuff or you know very little of it some of it i think is is kind of innate you know it's good to have rules but it's it's good to never just accept them think about that like if you if, if you go through someone's never do this and always do that list of acts and knife safety rules, but you never question it and never think about it, what does that say? That, that really means that you aren't thinking about your own safety. I mean, you're, you're, not, you're not engaged in the process of safety, which is an ongoing process. So that's really what I wanted to deliver is that philosophy. And, you know, if, if someone's like never cut towards yourself with a knife, like that's absurd. I mean, people do it constantly. I do it constantly, like, like this right here, you know, say for instance. But I've been doing this for a long time. I know 
uh, pretty well what my capabilities are, how this material is going to respond, how the knife is going to respond, what its capabilities are, and I'm look at my, you know, look how controlled and sophisticated my hand position is. It's very, you know, it isn't just some random. Sorry, I'm just now I'm obsessed with making these little chips here. <laughs> And these exercises are great for both learning knife control and safety. You know, just take a stick that carves well. Get something that carves well. Like this wood is, is behaving really nicely. This is tan oak. Look at that nice curl. Um, it's a nice, it seems to be a tough rubbery wood, so it's not chipping off and falling into little pieces. So something like this is great to practice on. And you can just try different things, like make little notches, make curls, um, make long curls, make short curls just sit around and whittle on this thing and then throw it in the fire and do it again some other day yeah so i just wanted to tie that up by saying that you know i could tell you a bunch of do's and don'ts and a bunch of things that that might happen to you but today i just wanted to give you those things and tell you basically keep yourself out of the way of the tool i mean you could reduce it to being that simple but of course when you start to think about it and understand it and actually do it it gets just infinitely more complicated and as time goes by you're going to start to build up this database of knowledge a physical knowledge um, almost like a physical memory that's going to tell you what to do and not to do and that little guy in your head is going to say watch out and sometimes it's not going to be like an accident is going to happen it's going to be like we're getting into the danger zone you know that's what he's telling you like when i do this i immediately have that voice comes up right like the way i was carving this and i'm 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 like okay yeah i hear you but i'm you know i'm going to just be careful basically i'm going to apply the knowledge that i have and the physical memory that i have of doing this to make this work without hurting myself and that has to do with like control and hand positioning and how i'm cutting and all kinds of other stuff that are in my computer here with that that's cool i think i like this video i think this is a good idea and um, be safe out there because it really you know david still re regaining the use of his hopefully of his finger after cutting it with a machete and this is my worst fear with any sharp tool is cutting a tendon they may or may not be able to reattach you that and get you working again and i'm sure in the old days there was lots of people walking around with curled up you know fingers that didn't work anymore and missing digits and you know limps from cutting their feet with axes and this could happen to me any day here you know and i try to stay intently aware of that fact i'm not immune in any way to accidents happening i try to think of it as i'm putting myself in danger every day i pick up an axe and go out into the woods or every time i pick up a super sharp knife and use it and that's the truth because that's the truth and not even as a disclaimer, but just to tell you the damn truth. Every time, you know, you need to be aware that anything I tell you here um, and anyone, anything else you learn about safety or using sharp tools, I mean, it's your responsibility to interpret that and how you interpret that and how you apply it is, you know, your responsibility. Like, this is not freaking kindergarten or whatever. This is like real life. If you choose to pick up a sharp tool and follow someone else's advice, or just go out and use it at all or follow their example um, you know that is your responsibility um, period and the the construct we've come up with to make it someone else's responsibility that you know the thing they tell you that you choose to go do is you know not your responsibility is just bullshit you know i mean that's the modern world that's like this world that grew up on obedience to authority like this is what they teach you in school you go to school and they teach you how to follow the rules and how to be obedient to authority and then when something goes wrong who do you blame not yourself you're just following rules right you blame the authority the expert didn't tell you how to do it right just you gotta throw all that shit out the window there's a gray area for sure but we're, we're way more whiny and blaming other people for our actions and we should be and with safety and using sharp tools it comes down it really comes down to actually it's less safe to adopt that attitude it's much less safe you need to adopt an attitude of personal responsibility or you're not going to stay safe because you're always 
deferring your intelligence and your engagement in the process of safety to some other authority. And you should not do that. Do not do that. If you have that mindset, start uncultivating it right now uh, permanently because that shit does not fly in the real world. And if you get yourself out in the middle of the woods with a sharp ax, that is about as real as it goddamn gets right there. So uh, yeah, all right. See you later. Here I am, I'm back with my guitar out on the porch and my finger works. At least it works a little bit.